Today we're going to talk about spaying your female dog and some of the medical implications. I'm Dr. Meggs and this is Everyday Vet. By spaying, I'm referring to the surgical procedure in which we remove the uterus as well as the ovaries from your female dog. This prevents her from going into a heat cycle and prevents her from being able to reproduce. Now, when we do this, since we're taking the ovaries out, we're actually changing the hormones within the body, and this has several different medical implications. So when deciding whether or not to spay your dog and when to spay, it's really important to consider the risks as well as the benefits of the spay procedure. So first off, let's discuss why we might even want to spay the dog in the first place. So by taking out her ovaries and her uterus, we're preventing her from being able to go through a heat cycle and preventing her from being able to reproduce. So if you're not wanting your dog to become pregnant, this is gonna be the best way to ensure that she doesn't have any litters. Unwanted litters can pose a pretty serious medical risk to your dog as well as financial constraints too for owners. So when your dog becomes pregnant, in order to confirm the pregnancy, a lot of times we end up having to result to imaging such as x-rays or ultrasound. And the problem with this is both procedures are actually fairly expensive as they're ad advanced imaging. Now, the other thing to take into consideration is just like humans, some dogs actually may need a C-section in order to get the puppies out. Um, especially like your bulldog type breeds, they tend to have um, a harder time with pregnancies in general. And if you're not planning on a C-section going into the pregnancy, the C-section may end up turning into an emergency procedure and can incur high medical costs. But also we have to consider the really huge impact that it could have on your dog's health. So, you know, we're talking about a pretty pretty invasive surgery, you have to open the abdomen, take the puppies out, and then she's gotta nurse those puppies. There could be complications of the pregnancy and you could really be putting your dog at risk for something that you weren't wanting in the first place. So if you don't wanna breed your dog, I would encourage you to get her spayed. Now, there's other things too that we can see with spaying in general. So the ovaries are actually a source of hormone production and they found that these specific hormones can alter the environment in the uterus itself and predispose to what's called pyometra. Pyometra is when the uterus gets filled with infection and it can be really detrimental to the health of your dog. Oftentimes when I see dogs with pyometras, they end up having to have emergency surgery to remove the uterus. And removing the uterus at that time actually becomes much more complex than like it would be for a routine spay, primarily because of all of the infection in that uterus. Since it builds up pretty quickly, the uterus ends up stretching. It doesn't really have much time to accommodate for the overall expansion. And it's instead, like instead of being filled with puppies, for example, it's got, you know, all this pus and discharge inside the uterus. And the uterus can become incredibly fragile, um, especially, you know, ones that like you can see. So a normal uterus depending on the breed, is, is usually about this wide when I remove it. Um, some of them, of course, are going to be significantly smaller. But for example, a uterus that might be this size regularly with a pyometra can even be like this wide. And, you know, the wall thickness hasn't really had much time to, to change. So you end up with this stretched out effect and the wall becomes very, very thin. So there's just this tiny barrier shielding the abdominal cavity from this underlying infection. And if that infection gets into the abdomen itself, that can be really disastrous. Um, you know, you're gonna talk about serious use of antibiotics, having to flush out the abdomen, and you might end up with irreversible effects of having such contaminated stuff into the abdominal cavity. So it can be a really difficult procedure and definitely affect the overall welfare of your dog. But by removing the ovaries, we remove the source of those hormones that predispose to that infection developing. And of course, when we do the surgery, we're also removing the uterus. So the location where that infection sits is actually gonna be gone too. So we're essentially eliminating the possibility of your dog having a pyometra. Now, the other thing that we can see, and particularly with the impact of ovarian hormones in general, is dogs that are left intact have a higher occurrence of mammary cancer. And they've actually found that the mammary cancer is directly related to the hormones being produced by the ovaries. And in specific, in spaying your dog before the first heat cycle, particularly at six months of age, 
is going to dramatically reduce the risk of mammary cancer because she hasn't really had that much presence of those ovarian hormones. Now, spaying her before her second heat cycle will still reduce the risk of, of mammary cancer, but not quite as much as removing those ovaries before the first heat cycle. Now, if you spay her after her second heat cycle, you're still removing the hormones produced by the ovaries, so as well as the uterus, so you're going to get that um, reduction in the potential for the pyometra, but we don't really see as much of an impact on potential to develop mammary cancer. So if you're looking to prevent mammary cancer in your dog, particularly if you have one of the breeds that are predisposed to mammary cancer, I would definitely encourage you to spay her before she hits the six months of age mark. Now, we also have to consider some of the potential risks associated with spaying the dog. Now, one of the things that we do see is an increased incidence of urinary incontinence, particularly because of the loss of the hormones produced by the ovaries. And we do actually find that um, dogs that have urinary incontinence, um, females in particular, they, they can sometimes respond to treatment with estrogen even, so we're kind of resupplementing those hormones that we took out with the removal of the, the ovaries. Um, or there's other medications too to treat urinary incontinence depending on which type of incontinence they develop. So yes, it's an inconvenience and it is a medical concern for the dog, but it usually is pretty well treatable. Um, dogs that have urinary incontinence tend to do quite well with medical management. Um, the key things that we're going to need to watch out for, though, are making sure that we're monitoring for any urinary tract infections because since they have um, a higher ability to leak urine, they have a higher ability for bacteria to get into the bladder as well. So you would want to keep up with routine monitoring and, and make sure they don't develop an infection. But otherwise, they tend to do quite nicely with treatment. And I would not consider urinary incontinence to be life-limiting or even a painful thing to have happen. So it's not ideal, but it is much better, I would say, at least to have urinary incontinence than mammary cancer. Now, the other big consideration that we have to take into account with spaying the dog, and actually probably something that's gonna have an even bigger implication on overall welfare, is the occurrence of orthopedic disorders. Um, there was actually a study that came out about German shepherds, and they did find that the age of the spay in, like it altered the probability of the dog developing any kind of orthopedic issues. So they found that you know dogs that were spayed less than six months of age had the had a, an increase in like tears to their cranial cruciate ligament, for instance, as well as dogs spayed less than a year old still had this increase. So if you have one of the breeds that are more prone to joint disorders as opposed to mammary cancer that might actually alter the age at which you want to spay your dog, particularly if you have a working breed dog. So, you know, a shepherds that go into the workforce and, you know, maybe as a police dog, for instance, they need their mobility in order to do their job. Now, on an individual basis, it may be beneficial to push their spay back a little bit and allow for more bony development before spaying them, but then you are risking mammary cancer. But again, it was only 4% in this breed. So depending on overall goals, it might be worth altering the time that we recommend the spay procedure. So in conclusion, there are some pretty serious medical considerations to take into account when deciding when and if to spay your female dog. So on the one hand, we are reducing the risk of pyometra and mammary cancer, but on the other hand, we're potentially increasing the risk of urinary incontinence as well as joint disorders. So I definitely encourage you to have a good conversation with your veterinarian and decide what timing is gonna fit what you need for your individual dog as there are definite breed differences as well. Um, I know that was a lot of information, so please leave me a comment below and let me know, um, you know, did you run into any of these complications associated with spaying your dog and what breed of dog do you have? That's all for today. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'm Dr. Megs and this is Everyday Vet.